Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh. I am the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the clinical anatomy of the fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve cranial nerves part 43 trigeminal nerve part 1 clinical anatomy of the trigeminal nerve so what all we should know about the fifth cranial nerve that is the trigeminal nerve the trigeminal nerve that is the fifth cranial nerve is the largest nerve it has a large sensory part and a small motor part. So the sensations of the face are carried by the fifth cranial nerve and the motor innervation of the face is done by the seventh cranial nerve. So it has a large sensory part and a small motor part. The sensory component has three divisions. The first or ophthalmic division, the second or the maxillary division and the third or the mandibular division. The motor and the principal sensory nuclei are located in the midpons. The spinal tract and nucleus which subserve pain and temperature extend from the pons down into the upper cervical spinal cord. Whereas the mesencephalic root receives proprioceptive fibers. The trigeminal nuclear structures thus extend to the rostral spinal cord. The sensory portion innervates the face, the teeth, oral and nasal cavities, the scalp back to the vertex, the intracranial dura and the cerebral vasculature and provides proprioceptive information for muscles of mastication. The motor part innervates the muscles of mastication. Now we will talk about the motor portion. The motor root leaves the skull through the foramen ovale and then joins the mandibular sensory division briefly before separating to supply the muscles of mastication, namely the masseter, temporalis, medial and lateral pterygoids. The masseter muscle closes the jaw. The masseter may be the most powerful muscle in the body. The lateral pterygoid opens the jaw. When pterygoids contract on one side, they pull the mandible contralaterally. Thus, when there is a unilateral pterygoid weakness, the jaw deviates towards the side of the weak muscles. I repeat, when there is a unilateral pterygoid muscle weakness, the jaw deviates towards the side of the weak muscles. It is easy to remember by a simple law known as law of 17 or otherwise known as rule of 17. Twelfth and fifth cranial nerves, if they get affected, the part is pulled towards the side of lesion. Twelfth and fifth cranial nerve, 12 plus 5 is 17. If tenth and seventh cranial nerves get affected, the movement is towards the healthier side. 10 plus 7 is also 17. So 10 plus 7 is 17, 12 plus 5 is also 17. If 12th now and 5th now are affected, the movement is towards the disease side. Whereas if 10th now and 7th now are affected, the movement is towards the healthier side. Rule of 17, easy to remember. Now we'll talk about the sensory portion. The trigeminal or Gessarian ganglion, the largest ganglion in the peripheral nervous system, lies just beside the pons. The sensory root can be compressed by vascular loops causing trigeminal neuralgia. So one of the important clinical observations of the sensory portion of the fifth cranial nerve is trigeminal neuralgia. There are two types of sensory neurons in the Gessarian ganglion. One mediating fine discriminative touch, second mediating primarily pain and temperature sense. Afferent fibers conveying light touch and pressure enter the principal sensory nucleus and then gives rise to second order neurons 
that cross the midline and ascend in the trigeminothalamic tract en route to the ventral posterior medial thalamic nucleus fibers subserving pain and temperature that is the spinal tract extends from the principal sensory nucleus down into the spinal cord as far as c3 the axons of the second order neurons cross the midline and ascend to the vent vpm alongside medial lemniscus and spinothalamic fibers fibers from the vpm project through the thalamic radiations to the sensory cortex in the postcentral gyrus where face fa where facial sensations occupy the lower third you see the cl clinical anatomy of the cranial lobe the sensory part the cutaneous distribution of the trigeminal lobe there are two types one the peripheral distribution second the segmental distribution you can see in the diagram there are three subnuclei from above to below somatotopically v1 is represented more anteriorly and v2 and v3 more posteriorly so you can see the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve supplying in the anterior part the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve supplying the medial part and the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve supplying the posterior aspect of the face there is another type of sensory distribution which is known as balaclava helmet distribution or onion skin organization the face is represented as, as concentric rings from the perioral region to the preauricular region like an onion skin to somatotopic organization fibers from the four face that is the upper lip mouth and the tip of the nose synapse more rostrally in the nucleus of the spinal tract those from the hind face synapse more caudally in the c2 and c3 because of this organization there may be occasional sparing less frequently selective involvement of the perioral region compared to the posterior face known as balaclava helmet distribution this you can appreciate in the diagram so this is the third cervical segment second cervical segment you can see the onion peel appearance and the distribution of the trigeminal nerve sensory fibers so anteriorly you see the perioral but and then it is in the rostral place but as you come caudally the posterior part is represented in the more caudal uh, distribution of the spinal cord so this is known as balaclava helmet distribution proprioceptive fibers pass through the gazerian ganglion without synapsing and terminating in the mesencephalic nucleus the mesencephalic nucleus mediates the jaw reflex projections join the trigeminothalamic tract and ascend to the vpm so the jaw reflex has two components afferent and efferent as any other reflex but for jaw reflex the afferent is also fifth nerve and the efferent is also the fifth nerve the ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular divisions of the trigeminal nerve leave the skull to the following skull foramina superior orbital fissure foramen rotundum and foramen oval respectively here you can see the distribution of the sensory loss following complete section of the trigeminal root note the large area of the angle of the jaw that is innervated by c2 to the greater auricular nerve and the inclusion of the tragus of the ear in the trigeminal distribution so a person says there's a loss of facial distribution including the angle of the jaw that means it is unlikely to be trigeminal nerve involvement because the large area of the angle of the jaw is innervated by c2 through the greater auricular nerve so these are all the important aspects of the clinical anatomy of the fifth cranial nerve the other important aspects of neurology i put it in a question and answer format in the book focus neurology written by me dr s srinivas it is available all over the world online including amazon so if interested this book could be bought online i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of the clinical anatomy of the trigeminal nerve if you have really enjoyed it please share it like it but do subscribe my youtube channel Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts and my webpage Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.